Okay, today we're going to talk about this custom shooting bench that I just built. Oh, first thing I want to do is shout out to this uh, myoutdoorplans.com. Um, this is where I got the plans to the shooting bench itself, the wood portion. Um, gives nice detailed plans. I did find a couple um, errors in there. Um, wood sizes but all in all it's it's a good plan um, it'll tell you all the wood you need all the lumber so I will put the link in my description to myoutdoorplans.com where I found this and it was a free plan um, it's not a huge bench it's about three feet by I think about four or five feet let's see 1836 yeah you're probably about you know three feet by four feet five feet something like that when it's built so let me show you, we'll put this down over here. And okay, so I use all pressure treated wood. Um, the only piece I couldn't find that they had listed in the plans was the two by 14 wide. Um, I couldn't find anywhere that had that pressure treated right now. I guess, I don't know, I guess it's still kind of scarce. I'm not really sure. But anyway, in the instructions it said you could use two three quarter inch pieces of plywood, glue them together. So I did that for the benches. Um, and once I get done with this video, I'm going to sand everything, wood, you know, water seal it, because um, it will be out in the yard. Now, that's where we get into the other thing. Because this was going to be in the yard, and because I wanted to use it at different distances, there were two things I had to do. One, it had to be movable, so I had to add wheels, which we'll go over in a minute. But the second thing was, the way that the plans come, the legs are actually, I think, I think they were 10 inches longer than what you see. Because they wanted you to um, sink this 10 inches into the concrete. And it would become stationary. And I want to be able to shoot, like I said, from a variety of ranges, uh, distances on the range. So I wanted the wheels. So what I did was I made the legs, um, I think they were 10 inches longer. I cut them down 10 inches, so they're all 10 inches shorter. Now, this is where we come into the next problem. The next problem is you really do, as the instructions say, have to use wood glue when you assemble this. Um, it does make it much more sturdy. Now, I hadn't waited for the wood glue to completely dry. And the weakest point in this um, bench was the back single leg. I'll explain that to you in a second. Um, also, they wanted you to use, I think, two and a half inch screws everywhere. I used three and three and a half inch screws, and I used a really, you know, a high quality powder coated deck screw. So, um, and even those, eh, they were okay. So, as you can see, I added some lag bolts into the 4x4s. Um, on all the 4x4s I ended up using lag bolts and that really got them in strong plus they're glued so when the glues dry they should be really strong. Um, one piece that they did have marked wrong you're 33 inches across the face and they had you cutting that board to 32 and a half which leaves a quarter inch outside edge where it doesn't touch on each side. So you, you want to make that bottom board 33, not 32 and a half, and then it'll be flush with the sides. All right, so now we'll get back to the, um, the center post in the back. Okay, so right behind this pipe, there's two lag screws that went into the 4x4 post that you see right here. Um, and because I wanted this movable, even when I was just sliding it around out here on the concrete, I could see this um, 2x6 board just flexing. And it finally did break off. Uh, the post stayed connected to the 2x6 because I had it, the lag bolts in it. But the 2x6 just broke out. And it didn't break the wood. It literally snapped those nice... Um, deck screws I had just snapped them clear off sheared them off so I knew at that point that I had to do more because I was going to be moving this so what I did was first of all you can see these four screws here those go into the top of the 4x4 post okay well what I ended up doing was adding another section of 4x4 four four post in this opening right here 
and what I did was you can see I went into that 4x4 with these two lags and these two lags to hold that 4x4 post which holds this um, and I did the same thing on this side so you've got that 4x4 section of post that slides down in there and then with the lags and with the lags so I used lags like I said pretty much on on everywhere there was a 4x4 post and now that's not going anywhere um, it's solid as can be because the next problem with that one area was that once I put these wheels on the front I'll tell you about those in a sec and once I put the jack up wheel on the back that again as it came up and angled it this way there was a lot of stress on this area but now with all the new lags and everything there's no stress at all so anyway the shooting bench is very heavy and very strong just when you assemble it from the wood. Um, like I said, this is going to be, um, you can see I live on 22 acres and I have a pretty long shooting range. Um, I'll, maybe I'll shoot some more footage. It's not anywhere where you can see in this video, but um, I'll take some shots of it once it's all on the range and done so that you guys can see what's going on. Now, as far as the wheels, these are Harbor Freight 10 inch pneumatic wheels on a fixed plate. I think they were, I don't know, 13, 14, 15 dollars, something like that. I can't remember exactly. But I'll give you the link to them in the description. And all I did was I just held it so that the wheel was flat on the ground and put the plate up to the 4x4 and then made my sharpie mark along the top of it so I knew the height then took the wheel off held the plate up against there because you need to take the wheel off to be able to, to bolt it in properly use some really nice lags and washers on it mounted it put the wheel back in now the wheel is barely touching the ground see how you can spin it it's scraping the ground but barely okay and I did that on both sides okay so initially I just came back here and took my hand and I just reached under here on both sides and lifted it up but it's really awkward walking with it still very heavy so then I decided well let me do something to lift the back so I immediately thought of a trailer jack now um, your trailer jacks you can get them in one wheel for as little as 30 bucks two wheels for like $45 and up but when you go to the two wheel with pneumatic wheels that you could push over rough terrain, lawn, stuff like that, all of a sudden they go to like three or four hundred dollars and up. I saw some of them for thirteen hundred and eighty dollars and all they are is a jack with two pneumatic wheels on it. So uh, I took a quick look on YouTube and I found a whole bunch of videos on you know putting pneumatic wheels onto the cheap thirty dollar trailer jack so let me give who did I use let's see here I used um, Gwinnett lawns on YouTube G W I N N E T space lawns on YouTube and he had a video about doing something similar to this almost identical a little different uh, on his trailer so that he could move it around his garage easily so what I did was I went to Harbor Freight Bought the same 10 inch um, tires, same pneumatic tires. Um, these have a black rim, the other ones have silver. I couldn't seem to get these in silver or the other ones in black. So we've got black on this side, silver on the other. But these I think were $9 each. Um, and then I used an 8 inch, half inch bolt all the way through with a half inch nut, lock washer. I used a half inch washer that fits the same size as the as the bearing because you can't have it touching the wheel or else the bearing won't spin so I got some washers that were the same size as the uh, bearing now some of this stuff I can give you links to but other stuff since I have a shop and I build a lot of stuff I already had those washers so I'm not sure the exact size if you went into a store to buy them I'm not even sure they could have been a metric washer I had um, so, you know, that's what I did for there. Now, in the middle here, remember, there's an existing plastic wheel, so we took it out, and this is a half inch by half, um, galvanized pipe fitting. It's a T-fitting, 
okay? In the middle of that T fitting, I put a half inch long bushing. It's about the length from this spot to this spot uh, because your wheels are actually five eighths. Um, but this housing for the uh, trailer jack, it only has half inch holes and they're kind of close to the end so I didn't want to be drilling those out to five eighths. Uh, there wouldn't have been a lot of metal left on the frame. So I did now I used half inch thick fender washer here, half inch thick fender washer here, then the same thing on the other side of the frame, half inch thick fender washer there, and those fender washers hit the inside bearing area again on the wheel um, so that that was fine. Now uh, this tightened up nicely. Um, I'm going to put a nylon lock nut there. That way you can have infinite adjustability. Um, I didn't happen to have one as I was finishing this up. I thought I did. So right now I just have one of those like spline type lock washers, but I'm going to take that off and put a nylon lock nut because you can't tighten this all the way because it, it'll it'll be just too tight. It'll still spin well and all, but it, I like it to be just on the edge of tight to loose where everything seems where there's no play, but it spins freely. Um, so anyway, so then here's the other problem is that the way when this lifts up at an angle and this starts to come out this way as it lifts up, steering it just by pushing the table, as long as you're on concrete, you're fine, but when you get on the lawn, it really doesn't want to steer. So that's where this handle you see comes in. Okay, so what I used was half inch pipe for plumbing, threaded it into the T-fitting down there in the middle, went up to another T-fitting, but this time this T-fitting went to three quarter on each side, and then I used some one inch, they say they're one inch, but they were tight on this three quarter pipe, so um, bicycle handles. Now, um, if you go on Amazon, you can find one inch ones instead of, I believe they're like, I forget the size below for a regular bicycle, but I put those on it. Now, I also put a piece of heat shrink tubing down the shaft of the, the pipe that I use just to give it a little bit of durability, um, you know, just so that it doesn't, you know, chip up anything else or get chipped up. Um, I did spray it with a semi-black Rust-Oleum paint. Um, the handle that you spin it with kind of holds it in place so it doesn't go anywhere. And then if you just push this handle off to the side and push the handle down or up, um, you can just move it out of the way and then the handle comes down, which you can see. Now, as far as the handle goes, there is one thing I would have done differently. I used a 24 inch piece of pipe because I didn't want it to come above the table. But optimum wise for steering it, pulling it and pushing it, when you get back here, it's a little low. 36 inches probably would have been perfect, but then it would have come up, you know, past the table here. So I don't know if I wanted to, to do that. But once you crank this up now, once you turn the handle and crank it up and you've got your steering, it moves across the lawn, you can push it around anywhere you want, and when you get where you're going, you just lower it, and you're done. So, the last thing I had to do, which was, because we're here in the Florida sun, oh, and by the way, the pieces of wood that I added to do the wheels, I added uh, a piece of 2x4 pressure treated wood here, and then just used some lag screws and went right up with that, holds it really tight. This piece of wood I added for the umbrella pole, which I cut down 18 inches, which would have been the distance as if it had made it down to the ground like on a picnic table. Um, and I added that because here in Florida, you're gonna get hot, so we had to have an umbrella to keep us cool while we're at the table, so you can get a shot of how that looks when it's up on the shooting bench. So that'll keep the sun off of us because you'll bake. Um, other pieces of wood I added were these two by fours from the top of this board down to the floor because the way that the front wheels mounted, uh, you needed that extra width to go into this board over here. So I added those on both sides. Um, so the two pieces for those wheels and the 4x4s four four underneath here, 
two pieces here and this piece. That's what I added extra beyond the plans. Um, and I wanted to go with a bigger umbrella. But the spacing, you can see, if we come down here, it's just paper thin between the jack and the pole in between the pole and the lag screws. So that was the biggest size pole I could go with and unfortunately that meant the biggest size umbrella was like seven and a half feet. I wanted to go with like a 10 or a 12 to really cover the whole table and everything but then the pole was so big I didn't have the the room. I mean I could have drilled a hole in the table but I didn't want to do that. I wanted it more or less out of our way as an extension of the table instead of somewhere on the table. So that pretty much um, sums up the shooting table. So now I'm going to do a little sanding on it, a little water sealing on it, and then I'll uh, drag her out onto the range. So I hope that some of you that are building these types of tables got some good ideas. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments, and I'll see you guys later.